What's up YouTube? Welcome back to a Final Thoughts video. I know I've been a little backlogged on these videos lately, but it's all good. Today I'm going to be giving you my final thoughts on the games that I completed throughout July and August of 2014. So first up is a game that I completed that is a downloadable title. I played it on the Xbox One, but it's also available on PC, you know, like Steam. And it just came out on iOS devices, and that is Valiant Hearts. Guys, let me tell you, this game took me by surprise. I was not expecting to be so into the game like I was. Um, it's an Ubi art game. It's, I think it's put out by the same team that did Child of Light, which is another downloadable game. The game's amazing. It's basically an adventure game or like a point and click adventure game. There's some puzzle solving in it. Nothing like crazy. It, the puzzles that are in the game are very doable. You know, you don't have to scratch your head trying to think about what what you're supposed to do. But the story is just brilliant. The character development is amazing. And there is a cute dog in the game. I mean, this dog is just so adorable. He helps you out. He's there along for the ride. Um, I'm not going to give away the story <laughs> because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But I thought it was an amazing experience. Um, great point and click adventure. So if any of you guys are into that genre, you should definitely check out Valiant Hearts. Great stuff. I did complete a couple of the games that were in my summer backlog challenge throughout July and August. And one of the first is Vanquish for the Xbox 360. I gotta say, I really enjoyed this game. I had a blast with this game. Uh, it's another Platinum Games hit. Um, and I loved it to pieces. I honestly did. The game is just so cheesy and campy. I have absolutely no idea what happened in the story. All I know is that I'm this dude that smokes cigarettes and kills robots, you know? But that's okay. I don't have a problem with not knowing what the story is about because I had a blast with the gameplay. The gameplay is just so fast paced and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much um, because there was just so much going on. It's like you can run and then you can slide and shoot robots. There's explosions happening all over the place. But the shooting just, it was on point. It felt good to shoot and do all your acrobats around the environment um, and just kill everything that you possibly can. And some of the boss fights were really cool. I don't know if we'll ever see another Vanquish 2, but I definitely want Platinum Games to be putting out more of these campy games, you know, so I can enjoy them. I get a kick out of playing these. I did complete another game that was on my summer backlog list. That's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity for the Nintendo 3DS. I really have never played a Mystery Dungeon game prior to this one. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I knew it was a roguelike, you know, dungeon crawler RPG type of game. But I actually beat it and I walked away satisfied. Um... Mystery dungeon game, Pokemon games, I guess they're not really known for having a story, but I really liked the story in this game. It was kind of heavy. You know, it really was. It touched on death, it touched on friendship, um, things of that nature. It was really cool to see that in this type of game. I really wasn't expecting that at all. For those of you that don't know anything about the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, you basically play as the Pokemon. You don't play as the Pokemon trainer. You're playing as the Pokemon. Um, you have a few to choose from. And of course, you can go into these dungeons and capture Pokemon as well. But you go in dungeons and you complete objectives. And I had fun doing that. You know, it was like my go-to game for a couple of weeks. I'd play it, you know, when I was about to go to bed, um, you know, knock out a few dungeons here and there. And I eventually got through it. I did think that the game overstayed its welcome just a little bit, you know, it was just a little too long for what I wanted. Um, but I was invested in the story, so it wasn't all that bad. At the end of the day, I know the game didn't review well. I know people don't really like the game. But... After I read some reviews, I think that's mainly because those people have played the games in the series, the prior games in this series. So this game apparently cut out some of the cool features that were in the other Mystery Dungeon games. And since I've played none of the Mystery Dungeon games, I really wasn't missing out on anything. I like what they did here. Um, it looks great nice and bright great colors um i also enjoyed like building up my little town you know that was a lot of fun as well but um yeah pokemon mystery dungeon um not generally something that i'd get into but i'm glad that i gave it a try because i actually turned turned out to like it 
Early in July, I did complete Shovel Knight. I actually played it and completed it on the Wii U, and it was fan freaking tastic. That game is awesome. Um, if anyone's looking for a new eShop game and you haven't played Shovel Knight, I highly suggest the game. Now, I'm not one to be all into Mega Man, just because Mega Man always kicks my ass. No matter what Mega Man game I play, I feel like I'm defeated before I even put like 10 minutes into the game, you know? It always goes bad for me when I play Mega Man. But this game actually reminded me of Mega Man, except it was manageable. Um, but I don't want to bring up like the later stages because I felt like I wanted to throw my Wii U tablet, you know, my gamepad. I wanted to throw it out the window because some of those later stages really got on my nerves I mean I was so frustrated I was dying a bunch but if anyone if you're into retro games man this game has it all great platforming amazing music awesome graphics I mean it's just it's just a love letter for people that grew up with the Nintendo you know Super Nintendo it's a fantastic game I can't gush over this game anymore guys I love it and when the 3ds version goes on sale I'm definitely gonna get that on my 3ds and play through it again in mid-august I had the urge to play a Game Boy Advance game so I started digging through my collection and I came across Metroid Fusion and I put it in my Game Boy Advance and I didn't stop um, it took me a couple of days but God, this game is good. I had never played this game before. And I almost got mad at myself because I was like, man, Steph, you have had this game in your collection for a while and you have missed out. I mean, this is years of missing out on a fantastic game. <sighs> Metroid Fusion. No, first of all, no one ever told me that this game had like horror elements in it. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Um, but the atmosphere in the game, and you really wouldn't expect that because it is a Game Boy Advance game, but the atmosphere is sick. Um, you basically have this Super Metroid, well, it's not a Super Metroid, duh, that's a game, but you have this Super Samus, whatever, I forget the, the thing's name um, that's in the game, but you have this thing following you throughout the whole freaking game, and you're in some spots you know you can't let this thing see you or else it's going to chase you you know and you have to power yourself up throughout the game so at the end of the game towards the end of the game you'll be able to to defeat it or at least face it um but in the beginning of the game you're like stripped from your powers and you can't go up against this powerful being okay but there's some sp spots in the game where you're just like you kind of have to lay low you know, and you'll hear the footsteps from this thing. And it just creeped me out. Um, I'm not even going to lie. This game creeped me out. Metroid Fusion creeped me out. Please let me know. Any of you guys that have played this game, let me know what you thought about the atmosphere in the game. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the game. I thought it was fantastic. I honestly want to, I'm in the market to get a box copy of this game. This is one of my favorite Game Boy Advance titles. It's amazing. And like I said, it's the first Metroid game that I've ever played through and completed. So uh, it has a little special place in my heart. Uh, look at Samus a little differently now. Towards the end of July, I did end up completing Rogue Legacy. I actually pre-ordered it on the PS4 and it's cross buy slash cross save so I was able to play it on my PlayStation Vita and that's actually where I played the majority of the game I actually completed it on the Vita but I will mention that that cross bike slash cross save feature is amazing and more Vita games should do that I love the fact that I could play that game on the go upload my save in the cloud somewhere and then magically turn on my PlayStation 4 and be able to pick up right where I left off really awesome feature. Rogue Legacy is one of those games that harkens back to the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games that I really loved as a kid but they were just so punishing for me and I always got frustrated with them and that's how I felt when I first started playing Rogue Legacy. I honestly did. I wanted to give up on the game but I'm glad that I didn't because it turns out it's one of my favorite games of this year. 
overall the game's a platformer uh it's mostly an action platformer because you can pick a character in the beginning of the game you have an option of picking between three characters you pick one of those characters um and those characters have these ridiculous traits um sometimes you never know what you're gonna get but uh for the most part you can see what kind of character you're getting so for example um you might get a blind paladin you know and um, if you have a blind character, when you go into this castle, the graphics are going to be a little blurry. You know, you're not going to be able to see things clearly. And I love that about the game. The traits in the game are hilarious and they really do affect the gameplay and your experience. But anyway, you basically pick a character in the beginning of the, of the game and then you go into this castle and you try to get as far as you possibly can. Um, there are bosses in the castle. And the game is punishing. At least I thought it was. The game is punishing. And when you die in the game, that's it. It's almost like a roguelike. That's it. Um, you're gone. So you get booted back out. I mean, you get to keep your money and stuff like that. And you're able to upgrade your characters or whatever character you, you choose. You know, whatever characters are available. And um, once you start upgrading things... It becomes a little bit easier to play I gotta be honest with you I, I figured that out the hard way but yeah this game was a trip it was just so funny I had a great time the bosses kicked my butt but I eventually got through them um, another cool thing about Rogue Legacy is the fact that once you die you can go back into the castle um, and it's gonna be completely different it's going to be a completely different layout, which at first I didn't like. Um, you know, I kind of wanted it to stay the same. But then after a while, I started appreciating it. You know, I was like, I'm starting fresh. I'm going in new. And it's like, I don't know what to expect. So Rogue Legacy is fantastic. As I already said, it's one of my favorite games of 2014. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did, but it turns out I thought it was great. Now the last game I'm going to share with you guys, the last game that I completed in July and August is Watch Dogs. I completed the PS4 version. Now this is a game that I got at launch, okay? And I started playing the game and I don't know, I, I kind of felt overwhelmed by it. And I'm not quite sure why, um, but I just felt a little overwhelmed. It felt a little off, okay? So I gave it a while, I went back into it, and I couldn't get enough of it. I actually completed this game during my vacation time. I was home for like a week, and that's when I completed the game. I was just playing it nonstop. And I really did enjoy it. I did, I honestly did. Um, I like open world sandbox games. And this one is different enough for me um, to like latch on to it. You know, it's different. It's not your everyday open world uh, sandbox game. The main character, you know, the protagonist, Aiden Pierce, didn't really like him too much. He's kind of give or take. Um, the story overall was kind of meh, you know, it wasn't all that great. Um, but there was just something about the gameplay. Like, mechanically the game is legit it honestly is the shooting is on point guys shooting is great the driving is great in this game and i love the fact that since aiden is a hacker you can basically drive around chicago and hack the streetlights to your advantage or hack the environment to your advantage when you get in these crazy car chases and things of that nature I actually enjoyed the game. I loved the missions in the game. Um, I did a majority of the side quests. There still are a few of like the drinking games and the chest games that I didn't really do, the chess games. But um, overall, I spent a lot of time um, after I was done playing the main story, going back and just brushing up on some of the collectibles and some of the other side quest stuff. Really did enjoy it. Um, I know this game reviewed well um i guess it has a really high metacritic score maybe really high isn't the best <laughs> choice of words but um it reviewed it reviewed well but a lot of us gamers and when i say that i mean people that don't get paid to review games a lot of us are really down on the game we don't really like it i'm not quite sure why like I said, I enjoyed it. I might be in the minority there, um, but I, I had a good time with the game. I haven't touched the DLC. I don't have the season pass. I don't have any of the DLC. But once everything is out, then I'll go back into this 
game and play all of it you know I, I I'm really interested in what the DLC has to offer now I will say um the online stuff the way online is integrated into Watch Dogs is pretty cool but I think that might have been part of the reason why I felt a little overwhelmed I didn't like the thought of people can hack into my game and affect what I'm doing at the time because I'm one of those gamers that it's like I just want to play my game and I want to do what I got to do for the little bit of time that I have you know and be done with it and in Watch Dogs if you don't turn off um, that feature where people can come into your game and choose to like hack you um it kind of gets a little annoying so yeah Watch Dogs was really good and it surprised me I mean I wasn't really hyped for the game um but I was really interested in it because I felt like it was just something different and you know it turns out that it is different you know what I'm saying I know a lot of people think that uh these games are pretty much all the same but Trust me, this one uh, has some things that definitely make it worth your time. So those are my final thoughts on the games that I completed throughout July and August. Like I said, I've been a little backlogged on these final thoughts videos, but it's all good. My next final thoughts video, which will be for September, will be out in a week or so. So hopefully you guys will check that out. Let me know what you guys think about any of the games that I mentioned in this video. As always, I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and I'll check you next time.